Yeah, that summer of 2004, EPA had put out a report um, reviewing the risks to groundwater associated with hydraulic fracking in coal beds. And uh, EPA had this rather illogical conclusion. They knew that these liquids that was injected for fracking, fracking is a process where you inject liquids at high pressure with sand to hold open the uh, fissures that they create by their breaking rock with their fracking. Um, and they often use diesel, and one of the toxic components of diesel, benzene, was noted in this 2004 report as being toxic at the point of injection, and not all the, all the material came back, but yet EPA concluded illogically it presented no risk. It was absurd. Um, they even said that they deserve no further study. Uh, in the context that this was a, a new emerging industry and it should have been regulated uh, under the Safe Drinking Water Act according to a court decision in Alabama, um, it, it represented a fraudulent report from my point of view. So I claimed whistleblower status and wrote to Congress and asked that an Inspector General investigation take place of this fraudulent study by EPA. I, I should say that immediately following, EPA Inspector General began an investigation. Her name was Nikki Tinsley. They sent investigators here to Denver to see if, in fact, what I was claiming was correct. But the following summer, uh, Congress had passed the Energy Policy Act, which went out and uh, eliminated the requirement for injection for hydraulic fracking to be regulated under the Safe Drinking Water Act. It's famously known as the Halliburton loophole because Dick Cheney was behind that effort to get an exemption from the Safe Drinking Water Act. And part of your job at the EPA had been looking over um, industry and <clears throat> Bureau of Land Management reports about um, oil and gas propositions for and, and plans for drilling, so that was your yeah, the, uh, my responsibility at, at EPA uh, was to review environmental impact statements prepared by other federal agencies. Out here in the West, much of that is associated with this vast estate owned by uh, the public um, and either managed by the Bureau of Land Management or the Forest Service. And often those lands are, you know, leased off for oil and gas activity. What has changed in this industry is uh, this amazing ability to pinpoint a a horizontal portion of a well. I mean, they use GPS equipment and they're able to drill out horizontally right into the rock and then retreat uh, in several segments and first dynamite the casing to open up holes and then inject this fracking fluid. Okay. And um, in the news lately has been the fact that uh, part of the fluids they were using at some stage of the process was diesel, which they apparently were specifically not allowed to do. Right. The way this Energy Policy Act exemption um, was written was companies were exempted from uh, the Safe Drinking Water Act provisions when hydraulic fracking occurred, unless they used this diesel. So EPA announced last summer that uh, any company using diesel for hydraulic fracking would have to get a permit under the Safe Drinking Water Act. That hasn't happened. Uh, Industry is now challenging that as a lawsuit against EPA. The state here, our state in Colorado, um, some 1.8 million gallons of diesel has been used in fracking <clears throat> and supposedly the state is investigating that. But I'm certain that none of those companies using that applied for and obtained a p permit as required. Okay. Um, so I'm just learning about fracking and from what I understand, um, hydraulic fracking has um, increased aggressively over the past five, ten years. Um, so we have a huge number of, of wells and most of them now are uh, horizontally and high Yeah, most wells, most oil and gas wells, 90-95% of wells are fracked. What has changed in this industry is in our grandfather's day, they were looking for a trap. So the oil would have come up from down below and got trapped in an anticline or up against a fault. If it hadn't gotten trapped, it would just keep on coming to the surface. It couldn't be developed. So when they're looking for a conventional trap called conventional oil, uh, they've got to hit that spot. Um, if they're off of it, they get a dry well. This is a totally different business. Now what they're seeking is formations that uh, form oil, but the oil never left that formation. Sometimes we geologists call it elevator formations because they've gone down. So they would have formed at the bottom of a sea and just gradually gone down with other layers on top of them. 
but the whole layer has oil and gas, in this case the Niobrara shell, which has oil. And that's what makes this uh, uh, drilling at Lowry uh, targeted for oil, not for gas.